The Pulse School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF. Hey, Kara Oosterhaus here with realagriculture.com. We are back here today with a Pulse School episode, and I have here with me Jen Walker, who is the research lead with Alberta Pulse Growers. How's it going today? That's great. Thanks, Kara. So lot of Southern Alberta specifically had some large uh, hailstorms roar through. I know Manitoba's facing some extreme weather right now as well. So it leads to the question of what do we do with these pulse crops if they have seen some damage and what can be done? And that's a really great question. And it's actually one that we didn't have a really good answer to because there were so many different ideas and different people had heard about different things. And so um, a few years ago, in 2015, we engaged with Farming Smarter in Lethbridge um, to do a study on just that. And it was really comprehensive. There were sites in um, southern Alberta, central Alberta, and northern Alberta. And um, the team at Farming Smarter did a really great job of um, trying to figure out some of the intricacies of what do we do after hail and what can we do. So what were some of the things you found? So, um, kind of the cool part about this, and one of the tricky things about when we're studying hail is hail is very patchy. And so, even within a single field, you can have a lot of different levels of damage. And, of course, it's really hard to replicate that in research. And so, what they did is they developed, we called it the Hailinator, very cool machine that used chains. And they worked with AFSC um, crop inspectors to rate different damages. And so the, for the study itself, um, we looked at different growth stages. So really early in the growth stage, kind of at that four to six leaf stage, um, when it was partly through flowering and then when the, the plants had potted. So um, we did the work with peas and fava beans and a little bit with dry beans and um, kind of had similar results all the way across. Um, so layered over top of those different growth stages, we also did kind of a really light hail damage, so say 33% is what the um, crop inspectors assessed it at, and then a, a more severe damage is 60 to 70%. Um, and yeah, and then just tested out different rescue attempts to see can we salvage a crop out of these various things. So what were some of the rescue oh, attempts sorry. that were uh, given? So a lot of the stuff that we hear about is if you apply fungicide, you can save your crops, or if we apply nutrients, we can save our crop. And um, interestingly enough, there's not a lot of promising band-aids once a hail crop um, impacts any of the pulse crops. So depending on the stage, of course, the earlier the hail event happens in the crop's life cycle, the better. Um, I'm going to suspect that in southern Alberta, you guys are probably into flowering. You know, things are looking really good and healthy, and, and now they're fairly decimated. Um, I think it's kind of standard, you know, when you talk to anybody after hail event, don't go the next day and look you know, give it a week, kind of let the plants stand back up. And so much of it is wind and the moisture that comes with it. Um, and so to really go in and assess that damage, you kind of have to give it a little bit of time. Um, the, some of the things that we can say conclusively is adding nitrogen or other nutrients, micronutrients, et cetera, after a hail event really is a waste of money, regardless of the amount of hail and um, regardless of the plant stage. So that never seems to give a positive yield effect at the end. Um, there's a lot of talk about fungicides because, you know, you and I both know once the hail damages a plant, it's like a wound and bacteria and different funguses can get in and cause infection. Um, interestingly enough, as we get later in the season and as the, the damage gets more intensive, um, even a fungicide really doesn't save a lot of yield. Is there any pulse crops that you see bounce back better than others when it comes to hail? You know what, that's a really great question, and I'm not sure we have a good answer. Um, hail is damaging regardless of the crop. And um, so, again, you know, kind of super early on in the season, some pulse crops growing point stays below the ground, so they maybe have a better, bit of better chance to grow um, grow back up. The, the architecture of these plants is, is very intertwined and there's a lot of, you know, leaves that are held a little bit more horizontal instead of a little bit more vertical. And so that, that makes them fairly vulnerable. So if producers are out there walking and they're going, okay, this might be able to grow through this, what sort of other concerns might they have if the crop is damaged as far as like diseases go? 
So it's going to be kind of the same as any other disease, uh, any other year, except for now your your risk goes up. So I would be more vigilant about scouting. Um, and if you think that there still is opportunity to salvage some crop, then likely um, you're going to want at least two applications of a fungicide just to kind of protect what yield remains a little bit longer. Um, read your labels, rotate your groups. And I think you and I have talked about this before. Um, nothing substitutes for actually going in your field and scouting and, and seeing what's, what's happening. Okay, awesome. Is there any other message you'd like to give producers um, if they are dealing with any hail damage? No, I think just be um, be really diligent and um, make careful decisions about any rescue attempts. Um, and the you know because of this study, um, we have a little bit more knowledge, and so we can give a little bit more guidance. So feel free to contact myself or Nevin Rose Austin. Um, my counterpart at Alberta Pulse Growers, and we can help walk you through um, some of the decision-making steps. Um, the group at Farming Smarter will also be a really great resource because they um, have first-hand knowledge of this. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Jen. You're welcome, Kara.